Hello, today we are going to be talking about Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. It's Dostoevsky's final novel and by many people is considered the best novel from the author. For example, Albert Einstein said about the book. I'm rapturous about the Brothers Karamazov. It is the most wonderful book I have ever put my hands on. But what does the book want to say? What does it represent? What are the key takeaways? This video is about the key takeaways. I'm going to be talking about three main key things or facts about the book. It's a philosophical novel that enters deeply into questions of God, free will and morality. Disguised as a simple murder story, it tackles the fundamental questions of human existence. And it presents three brothers, impulsive and sensual Dimitri, coldly irrational atheist Ivan, and the youngest and purest of them, the novice Ayosha. And there is also a fourth brother that is uh, introduced later in the novel, Smerdyakov, and he represents the pure evil. The father of the sons, Fyodor, is an uh, impulsive and reckless rich man who chases after a woman. The father is killed and we are looking for a murderer. But as it is a case in the Dostoevsky's novel, the novel <laughs> isn't mainly about the plot. It's about how the brothers evolve in the novel and how they are deal with their struggles based on the different uh, world views. And there are three main key takeaways from the book and three key things uh, we should know about it. And I will talk about these three um, takeaways in a second. But now just a few facts about the book. It's a final novel from Fyodor Dostoevsky and originally it's supposed to be a trilogy but uh, unfortunately Dostoevsky died so it's uh, there is only one book even though <laughs> the book is very long. But the novel itself doesn't lack anything, it's a complete novel on itself. He wrote the novel after the death of his son Alyosha. And it's probably not a coincidence that he asked the question how can there be God if there is evil in the world? And also what is interesting that he named the, the father the not so good character after himself. And I think also in the crime and punishment the, the good character of Sonia uh, was actually like his, um, his daughter, Dostoevsky's daughter that died was also named Sonia and his niece was also named Sonia. And Sonia in Crime and Punishment is very pure and good character. So I think this naming is interesting. And because there are three brothers, it's quite likely that we will see um, ourselves interpreted in one of them. And the point of the novel is also that we should ask ourselves the question, which character do we want to be like? So the first key thing is that the book is fundamentally exploration of religious faith. And it deals with the conflict between faith and doubt. And the main characters represents the different positions these two things uh, can reflect. Faith in the novel refers to the positive and God practicing. Zosima and Alyosha. And they are connected with love of mankind, uh, kindness and forgiveness. Doubt is connected with the skeptical uh, approach of Ivan which in pursuing the truth through the logical examination of evidence lends itself to the rejection of God. And Dostoevsky isn't writing about these two things neutrally. He actively takes the side of faith and illustrates through many examples how the life of faith is much happier than a life of doubt. The second key theme is the shared guilt. One of the central lessons of the novel is that people shouldn't be judging one another. They should forgive one another's sins and should pray for the redemption of the criminals rather than their punishment. Zosima explains that this loving forgiveness is necessary because the chain of human causation is so interwoven that everyone bears some responsibility for the sins of everyone else. It is that one person's actions have so many complicated effects on other people's actions that it is impossible to trace all the consequences of any single action. Everything we do is heavily influenced by the actions of other people. And as a result, no one can be fully responsible for a crime or a sin. And the third key theme is the paralysis of choice or the burden of free will. Because when God is dead, then everything is possible. So the novel argues forcefully that people have free will whether they wish to or not. That is, every individual is free to choose whether to believe or disbelieve in God whether to accept or reject morality, or whether to pursue good or evil. And the free will and so many choices can seem as a good thing. But Dostoevsky showed through his characters 
that the people who choose to doubt God and they decide to choose different things than the traditional values from all the choices that are now possible when God is dead and you don't have to follow the religion are in fact unhappy people. And we can also see this theme in Crime and Punishment where Raskolnikov made the choice which is not a good choice and in Notes from Underground when the person is unable to make any choice. So the book is heavily religious. But now I will say some spoilers. So the father was killed by his illegitimate son, Smerdyakov. But the plot of the novel is carefully constructed in a way that we suspect the, the son of the father, Dimitri, that he committed the crime. There are so many things against Dimitri and the entire arrangement of the plot compels the reader to participate in the experience of discovering the limitations of reason because only the characters that are willing to believe against all the evidence only with love for Dimitri and the fate coming from love is stronger than the seemingly clear facts. So I think we can see the parallel there the, the, the people who are uh, believing in religion love God even though the logical um, explanations would suggest that he doesn't exist. The rational thinking Ivan um, who goes mad basically after Smordyakov kind of convincing him that he gave him a permission by what he said. So there is like this non-believer who uh, isn't happy. And surprisingly the novel ends on kind of a positive side where Alyosha, who after the death of one of the side characters' child, he has this kind of like nice speech to the to his schoolmates and to children because the children are the, the future of Russia, right? So he has this like nice religious uh, religious speech and Dimitri is probably going to exile. And Ivan is probably going to get better. So yeah, the book is heavily religious, um, but I think it's important book to read and to understand what Dostoevsky meant by it. If you have any additional information about the book, I would be happy if you share it in the comments. If you liked the video, please help me by giving this video a like. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.